Bonjour, je m'appelle Susan Damiani. Welcome to St. John's University Power Hour number 21. And I am so excited today. Uh, and I'll tell you why. We are here live at Bistro Elite in Jackson Heights, Queens. This is our very first Power Hour that's live on location. And I have to thank uh, this gentleman sitting right next to me for making this happen. Uh, just like Kelly and Ryan, I was tired of virtual and I <laughs> needed to go on location. So we're really going to immerse you in the French culture today with Vincent Perro, who's the owner of Bistro Eloise here in Jackson Heights, and also uh, Greg Broom, who's the director of our outbound program for the Office of International Education. And they are going to share their knowledge, their expertise, and of course, Vincent is, is born and raised in France. So they are going to share everything about wonderful uh, food and culture of the French people. And our actually our video producer today, Fabien, he is also French. So we're very French here today. Um, the other reason you're probably wondering like, why did I choose the Power Hour? Uh, a trip to France this particular week. Actually, we were supposed to be in Paris. St. John's has a travel program called the Globe Travel Program. And we were supposed to be in Paris. And obviously, due to the pandemic, we have to postpone our trip to next year. So if you didn't get an opportunity to sign up, it's not too late. If the health officials in St. John's give us the UK, we will be going to France next year in October. So with that ado, um, I don't want to waste any time. It's really today is going to be an escape from all this madness. And we are just going to have a fun, fun time. What also is unique about this power hour is it so happened that a couple of my friends happened to stop by the restaurant and they're having lunch with us. You'll be able to see some of them and they'll be included in the q and uh, for today. So thank you for joining us uh, virtually as well as in the restaurant today. And I'm going to turn it over to Vincent and Greg, and they'll begin our discussion of French food and culture. Merci. So I'm Gregory Brun. I'm the director of the program at St. John's University. I'm really delighted to be welcoming you to this power hour. I have to be joined by Vincent to discuss French culture, uh, French food, and a couple of our favorite regions, which are uh, Normandy and Britain. Um, and so just a little background on how this will work today. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a presentation. I'll have Sue start the uh, slideshow in just a moment. Uh, and then after my presentation on Normandy, uh, Vincent and I will take some time to be in conversation and uh, have an interview about his life, about French food, uh, and some of the delights that we're uh, so with that, Sue, I'm going to have you start the presentation on slide one. So just a bit of background about myself. Uh, I became interested in France and all things French as a young student in Maine, and my school started teaching French in fifth grade. Uh, and I went on to study abroad during university and had the great fortune to spend an academic year in Rouen, in Normandy, the capital of Normandy, which we'll discuss later in the presentation. Uh, and there I also had the opportunity to live with the French family uh, for a year and really have a really immersive experience with this. And so one of the reasons I'm so passionate today about working in international education is because I recognize what a profound effect that year had on the rest of my life, both professionally and personally. Living in another culture, in another language, challenging myself to embrace those differences, I came to realize that on some level, there was nothing I couldn't do. It really inspired me trying new things, and I've since worked as a French professor in one year, a translator for the Latin press, an interpreter for the Paris Opera Ballet, and had a long side career in catering, and I was able to work with uh, some famous chefs, including Jacques Tipper uh, and Jacques Torres through the French Culinary Institute. So New York, in fact, offers many ways to connect with the French culture, such as this piece and today we'll focus a bit on a few regions. We travel distance to Paris in the hopes of inspiring mm -hmm. you cultural and culinary journeys in France. Uh, and so uh, regarding the geography of Normandy, I have to say I felt right at home there. 
a pretty rugged landscape, very uh, similar to Maine. It's sauvage, as they say in French, with some pretty dramatic coastline and in many ways it reminded me of where I grew up. Uh, so there are many uh, incredible places to visit at a really short distance to Paris. And today, I think it's slide two. Uh, we'll start off in the uh, which is uh, Paris. Next slide. Then we'll move to Rouen, the former seat of the Norman nobility, a vibrant city along the Seine. Next slide, please. Then on to Dieppe and Etretta, two seaside towns with magnificent chocolates. Uh, next slide, please. On to Honfleur and Deauville, some of the most picturesque port towns you'll ever see. Uh, and finally, on to the next slide, uh, on to Mont Saint Michel and Saint Malo. Located at the edge of Brittany and Normandy. Uh, these are two magical medieval walled cities defying the south side of the Atlantic, uh, and where I personally discovered quicksand for the first time uh, in my life as a young man. Uh, so, next slide, we'll start in uh, Giverny. Uh, so, Giverny is an incredible little village nestled in the Norman countryside, known most famously for its painter and residence, Claude Monet. Who lived there from 1883 until his death in 1926. Uh, his famous pink house is settled among a tremendous garden, complete with his lily ponds and water leaves, and the interior is filled with the Japanese art that inspired him in his own work. The little town itself is also filled with gardens, and maybe about uh, 10 to 20 homes. It's quite small, but there are some excellent hotel restaurants for a great meal after your tour. Uh, I happened to be there in May, and the village was just full of irises and all its beings. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is where I live. This is Rouen, uh, which was the seat of the Norman aristocracy and the capital of the province uh, for centuries. And it's thanks to, to the Norman conquest, in fact, of 1066, that English as a language contains so many French words, particularly related to food. Uh, if you do get to Rouen, this is where Richard the Lionheart is, uh, is where he is well. It's also quite a uh, difficult city to pronounce. And I remember as a study abroad student, if people understood you the first time you said the city, you know you've made progress with your accent. Uh, it's pronounced Rouen, uh, which is uh, very, very French and very difficult to say. Uh, so uh, Rouen is both uh, a modern industrial port along the Seine. As well as a historic strolling city with a great network of pedestrian areas in its central view. You see here the high Gothic cathedral that dominates the center of town. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, so, here um, on slide 10, Rouen, this is a painting by Monet. Uh, Rouen is known as the city of 100 spires. Uh, you'll see that Monet was inspired by the painter who lives around Rouen and capturing its cathedral, seen here in the center of the painting. Uh, next slide. He painted it over. Next slide. Next slide. And over. Next slide. In the kind of uh, different kinds of morning and evening. Uh, next slide, uh, actually back one slide, sorry. And so there are dozens of examples that exist of Monet's uh, fascination with uh, the Rouen Cathedral. And those can be found in various museums in, or, in and around Paris and Normandy. Uh, so next slide, slide 15. Uh, so within walking distance to the cathedral, you can see some of Monet's paintings in the imp impressive Museum of Fine Arts. And along the way, you can stroll under the 14th century great clock and tower that arches over the main uh, shopping street. Uh, for the linguists out there, the clock is so old that it's still called in its masculine form, the Rue du Gros Horloge, even though the word clock became feminine a few centuries later, and now you should say Rue de la Grosse Horloge. Uh, this is just a holdover from medieval French. Next slide. Rouen is also the site where Joan of Arc was imprisoned and ultimately burned at the stake in 1431 at the age of 19. 
Today, there's a soaring contemporary church in honor of on the, on the spot where she died so tragically in the shape of an overturned boat in honor of Normandy's seafarers and with some of the most colorful stained glass you'll ever see. Next slide. These are a couple of examples of the half temper houses you see all over Normandy. It's very stereotypical. Uh, and even the McDonald's in Rouen is located in an old half timber house. Uh, next two. So here you have two of the more famous authors that come from Rouen. The first is Pierre Cornet, high master of the classical uh, tragedic theater in the early part of the 17th century. Uh, next slide. Uh, Anne Gustave Flaubert. 19th century author of uh, the very famous Madame Bovary. Flaubert's father, in fact, was a doctor in Rouen, and you can also visit their home and Dr. Flaubert's office, which is now a museum dedicated to 19th century science. You can also view Ferret, which inspired the Julian Barnes novel from the 1990s by the same name, Flaubert's Parrot. Uh, and recounts an English doctor's visit to Rouen to discover if it was truly Flaubert's real parrot. Next slide. So, though not from Rouen, Guy de Maupassant is another famous author from Normandy uh, from the 19th century, and he really captures the feel of the countryside, the rugged landscape, uh, and the peasant folk of the 19th century. Next slide. So next slide, Sue. Oh, so leaving Rouen, you can travel out to uh, the coast where you'll find Dieppe and Etretat, two coastal towns that offer some of the most magnificent, magnificent cliffs that the Norman coast has to offer. The white chalk cliffs soar above the English Channel, and Etretat in particular is known for the chalk archways that have formed out into the ocean as a result. Uh, they, these are both some great places to sample uh, the famous Moule Marinière, uh, seaside mussels, uh, that are available in all of the different seaside towns. Next slide. Further down the coastline are Honfleur and Deauville, which are both great strolling towns and a great place to sample the abundant seafood found along the coast, from langoustes or prawns to the Coquille Saint Jacques or sea scallops. Next slide, please. So just off the coast of Normandy and Brittany uh, is the awe-inspiring Mont Saint-Michel, a fortified abbey town built on an island. In fact, you can do the crossing of the bay by foot at low tide and, and with a tour guide, which is very important, because there are puffs of space that the, it's a tremendous way to arrive to the abbey uh, and approach the island on foot. Next slide. Semalo is another fortified medieval town along the coast. Uh, this is an incredible place to visit because it is, in fact, a replica of it. Much of Saint Malo was, in fact, destroyed during World War II, and through the use of old drawings and photographs, the town has been reconstructed exactly as it has been, exactly as it had been before the war. You really have no idea that the buildings aren't uh, ancient and medieval. Uh, and so for the readers out there, I can also highly recommend the novel, All the Light We Cannot See, which came out in the last decade, uh, where Anthony Doerr masterfully captures the magic of this little town as told through the experiences of a blind girl in World War II. It's a sweet and haunting novel. Uh, and as an aside to the writer Chateaubriand is immortalized with a tomb just off the coast of Saint-Malo on a small island. So a little tour of Normandy. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we will start talking about what's brought everyone here today uh, in the restaurant, which is la cuisine and French food. Uh, so uh, next slide. When you think of France, you of course think of uh, its bread and fresh bread and baguettes. Next slide. Uh, it's croissant, uh, seen here with chocolate, but also known for uh, its almond variety. Um, next slide. The chocolate eclair, which is my favorite, and eclair au chocolat, which is named after a flash of lightning, an eclair, because you eat them in a flash. 
Next slide. And of course, the very uh, colorful cheats, the Mecca hole. Uh, so next slide, please. So each region is known for its own style of cooking and ingredients. And these are some of the things not to miss when you are in Normandy, known for its heavy use of temp flesh, butter, cream, apples, and of course, it's seafood. So next slide. Uh, it's also home to some of the best sauerkraut or choux in France. And so the, though this is typically thought of as an Alsatian dish, Normandy has mastered this dish uh, in its own style, and it's quite common uh, throughout the region. Next slide. An, uh, an afternoon in Normandy should be accompanied by one of the numerous pâtés de campagne, or country pâtés, that come from the farms all around the country. Uh, as an ad treat, they're always served with these cute little pickles called ponichon. And Normans put plenty of creme fraiche on everything, from pies to cakes to green beans to chicken. Uh, it's really part of any part of the meal, as you'll discover there. Next slide. And a traditional dinner would be complete without a thick slice of the famous Norman apple pie called a tarte tatin, a pie that was invented by two sisters in the 1880s. Uh, with apples being a common fruit tree in Normandy, this type of dessert is found all over the place. Next slide. Uh, so uh, there are also a number of apple-derived drinks, including cidre brut, or hard cider, and calvados, a much stronger brandy-like alcohol derived from apples. That's also where you get the expression en trou normand, uh, which is a Norman hole. It's the shot of alcohol you take between courses to burn a hole in your and allow for more room for your next course. It's quite a delight of any French meal. <laughs> next slide, please. So Norman is also known for a wide variety of uh, very creamy cheeses, a lot of triple creams, and no dinner is complete without a cheese course just before the desserts. So with the range of cheeses like Pont Levesque and saint Nectaire, uh, next slide. This is also where you'll find the best camembert and brie uh, in the country, as well as, on the next slide, uh, an herb de boursin. Next slide, the brie savarin, which is another triple cream that's light and earthy. <laughs> Me too, I'm starting to get hungry as well. Uh, the next slide, as well as the libero, uh, which is a more intense nutty cheese. Uh, and finally, on the next slide, uh, the very oddly named Little Swiss, or Petite Suisse, which is a thick yogurt-like cheese served for dessert that actually comes not from Switzerland, but from Normandy. Cool, and that is the end of our presentation. Thank you so much, Sue, for running, running through it. That for us. Uh, so now, uh, I'm going to turn that to uh, the wonderful location that's hosting this event today, Useful Eloise, as I said, I'm joined today by the owner, Vincent Caro. Uh, so, bonjour, Vincent. Bonjour, Greg. Uh, so, why don't you talk a little bit about where you're from uh, and tell us about uh, the region of Britain. So, first of all, thank you, uh, Greg and Susan, for organizing this event here um, and uh, supporting the the initiative of uh, the exchange program. And because um, I, I was also part, um, when, I, when I came to the US, I was part of the exchange program uh, in Orlando, um, yes. in um, Epcot Center. I was working with, um, for Paul Bocuse. So wow. I, uh, I recognized myself a little bit in this, uh, that's in that story, I didn't realize that you studied in Poland. That's part of the exchange program. Um, I mean, working. Um, I was working at the. I was working for the for the French Pavilion in uh, in Epcot. Yeah. Ah, and so you come from uh, Britain. Um, yes. Tell us a little bit about that province and how it compares to. Uh, so, um, so I was born and raised in Brittany, in Brest, which, uh, like, um, like you said, um, I, I don't remember which uh, city you said in, uh, you mentioned in Normandy was uh, 
like destroyed by uh, ah, during the Second World War. Saint Malo. So Saint Malo, yes, Saint Malo, um, which is in Britain too. But uh, Bre um, yes, but uh, yeah, Brest was also destroyed during the Second World War. There's a lot of simili similarities between uh, Brittany and Normandy, um, but I was born and raised more in the like down the the state, so near Quimper, which uh, which in, is in the Finisterre, which means uh, the end of the world, because yeah. it's the west western uh, region in uh, the continent of Europe. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it is named Finisterre, which means uh, the very end of the world. Yes. And so, is Brest on the coast, or is it more in the? Brest is in the is a is an arbor, yeah. is a, known for uh, being a military arbor. Cool. And so, how did you um, come to uh, uh, discover your passion for food? What, what inspired you to participate in certain food? I mean, I, I first started when I was like fourteen years old, and. Um, a good, um, a good friend of mine had a, a good friend of my parents at a restaurant, and on the on the weekends and on vacations, I will go work in the, uh, in the restaurant. To for, first, it was like to make some uh, little pennies for uh, to to buy some candies, but but then then I I, I discovered like um, a real heart and like uh, like um, a, yeah, it's a, it, it's a passion to 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 work in that in that industry. So, and like little by little, like I work more more often, and um, and here I am. Yeah, <laughs> Queens today. Yeah, I mean France is France itself as as a country has really mastered gastronomy. Each region is known for its own uh, different specialties. So, what's particular about Britain cuisine and the type of food that you ate growing up. I mean, the main ingredient in the in the Brittany cuisine is the butter. <laughs> butter, butter, butter. butter. <laughs> if there's no butter, it's not it's not uh, Breton cuisine. Yeah, that's why like they in in the in the crepes. Like uh, yeah, like the most famous dish from Britain is the crepes, like the 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 crepe. Mm -hmm. There's uh, also a kika farce, which is like the Brittany version of like the choucroute, oh. but instead of like sauerkraut, it's um, uh, it's buckwheat uh, pudding. Oh, so yeah, there's, we have the gâteau breton, which uh, we have some simple simple here. It's also a lot of butter, 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 like and the uh, like, like the croissant, yeah. yeah. Um, there's also like uh, cider, like um, we have a lot of similarities with Normandy, like uh, the, the crepes, the cider, like the culture, like we are, like, we are kind of like the, the bro brother and si like the brother and states. Sisters, yeah. So I have a lot of family. My family is from Brittany, but a lot of them like moved to Normandy. So yeah, I recognize my, myself a lot in. Uh, in Normandy too. Yeah, it's true that there's a lot of butter in the cake. And I actually took uh, one other thing that you can do in New York City if you want to explore some French culture is to take a croissant baking class. Uh, and you'll uh, never see so much butter go into one little pastry. Uh, it's <laughs> remarkable. Um, and so, how did you come to Queens and uh, start working in uh, New York in the, in the restaurant industry? So I, I arrived in uh, in the U.S. in 2005. I spent uh, like six months in uh, in Orlando, and then I, I moved to New York. And I I came on a tra like uh, they call that back to back. It's like uh, two days uh, two days off on one week, two days off on another week, and you can take four days to to uh, to, to take a trip. New York, I've, I was like wow, <laughs> and. Uh, and I went back there and I said, like, I'm moving to New York. And a, mon a month later, I was here. Um, and uh, so were you working in the restaurant industry during that time? Yes. So I I looked for, I came, I looked for a job. Someone gave me an opportunity, told me, like, you have two days to come back. I'll save you the job. I was like, okay, you will see me in two days. That's fantastic. And, um, 
And so when did you open your first restaurant? I opened it in 2016. 2016. 2016. Uh, and that was here in Queens as well? It was, it was in Queens, uh, in Sunnyside. But uh, yes, and due to the... Um, so I, I had a short lease, so I had to find uh, uh, a solution to, to, to keep the, a restaurant open. So I met um, I met the owner of the bakery next door, Canal, Don yeah. Claude, and um, and he told me I have a, a wonderful spot for you if you want. And uh, I I told him give me two weeks to think of it. Within three days, I, I went back and I was like I took it. Yeah. And um, so here we are. And um, yeah. So unfortunately, the first the first place due to the COVID has been closed. Yeah. And um, so, so you've been able to keep this restaurant open. Yeah, I worked. Uh, I worked harder and harder since the COVID to to keep this afloat, and uh, so far, I, I can I can complain. Yeah, well, it's a beautiful space. I've had the pleasure of coming here a couple of times in preparation for this event. Uh, and it's true, as Vincent said, right next door uh, is Canel Bakery, so you can not only come for your French lunch or dinner here at East Hollywood. Get some pastries and uh, baguette to take home with you, as I will be doing after lunch today, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, and uh, I mean, it's a lovely French atmosphere inside, a very uh, stereotypical French atmosphere with the mirrors and a lot of light. Uh, the cafe is set up, but they've done a, you've done a tremendous job outside in providing a safe space for people to come during COVID. So uh, that's been a real treat for me as well. Um, so, what are some of the specialties of the restaurant uh, here at this morning? French dishes from like all, all over France. Like it, it goes from beef bourguignon to like cocova. Mm -hmm. On the winter time, we have the bouillabaisse, we have the cassoulet. Um, but the yeah, cassoulet, like foie gras, like you can you can find most of the most of the traditional dish made like. With a lot. With a Made with a lot. Uh, what do they do? Yes. Yes. Also, 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 grapes like the buckwheat grapes and the and the sweet sweet uh, sweet grapes. Yeah, I love learning in France that uh, generally see crepe when it's a sugary sweet dessert. Yes. But galette which is the coffee pancake. Uh, which is tend tends to be so safe, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I, I, um, I believe it depends where you are, wh where you're from, because like if you go in Rennes, which is a big city in, in Brittany, but it's on the east side of Brittany, like they call it the galette. But like where I'm from, we call it, we call, we still call it crepe. Uh, yeah. so, well, I like too that galette is also the name of the stones that you find at the beach along the coast of. Um, no, that, that's galette. That's, it's it's a it's a g it's 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 a g a l e t. Okay, so I'm a bad French teacher today. <laughs> I thought that was always the kind of. Oh, you. Exactly. We, we all learned it. Right? <laughs> to continue to learn. You get to continue to learn. Well, so what is uh, what's on the menu for today's lunch? For today's lunch, we're gonna do like a little testing of uh, different um, of uh, different lunch specialty, like uh, the crepes, the galette. Not the galette. Not the galette. <laughs> and um, some uh, some house creations, like uh, different uh, different mac and cheese, like uh, lobster mac and cheese, because mm -hmm. you know, Britain is known for like the seafood, like in Normandy. Right. So we have like. We have uh, also like this uh, uh, Coquille Saint Jacques, which is a sea scallops, the lobster. We even have our own lobster, which is in most, in most part of the world, you only find the, I mean, you only find the, the main lobster, which is the red one. Right. And in Brittany, we have the blue lobster, which is uh, much, um, it, it's uh, more, I, I, I will say it's more tasty, more, uh, more refined. Well, we both come from regions with uh, lobster itself in Maine, so yes. a battle of the international lobsters. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, cool. Um, 
So, Susan, did you want to uh, take oh, some questions, yeah. perhaps, from the audience? Yeah. Yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed uh, the discussion. Uh, we're opening it up to questions. Uh, you have these experts here. If you were planning a trip to France, now's your time to ask uh, all the great questions, and I'm sure they'll be able to give you some tips on uh, where to go and uh, restaurants and, and all that good stuff. But I actually, I have a question uh, pertaining to that. So, if I'm planning a trip, obviously, we, I just told everyone we were planning a trip to Paris and to Normandy. Uh, if you only had a week, I mean, where do you go? What, like, what would you recommend as a trip to France if you only had one week? You're bringing them on. Uh, they're so harsh. <laughs> Brittany, okay, well, I agree, but yeah. yeah. No, 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 I, I was, I was I joking, but no, yeah, you can, I mean, either you can, yeah, you can do Paris, Normandy, a few days in Paris, two mm -hmm. days in Normandy, two days in Brittany, or you can, if you're more into like uh, the terroir, you can go, you can do Normandy, Brittany, you can go to Bordeaux. Uh, or even go further down into southern France, into Provence, down on the southern coast, there's a tremendous amount of villages and small towns. Uh, with great museums, a completely different architecture, uh, and that's where you'll find some traditional dishes and fascinating, uh, some of the more southern cuisine in France. We have this course, is also from the south, yeah. Uh, really, you can't go wrong. I mean, wherever you go, you'll find a unique cuisine, a unique architecture, uh, and a lot to see uh, within a short distance. Yeah. Um, you probably could use a month for sure. Uh, we have um, some some interesting uh, audience members that I, I want to introduce to you. Uh, first, we have, uh, if you've joined us for some of our power hours, you'll notice we have Chef Danny in the audience. Thank you, Chef, for joining us. Um, I, I invited uh, Danny because uh, he studied in France, right, Danny? And uh, what... Would you like, do you have anything to share for our audience about France or French cuisine? He can't hear. Oh, I have to repeat. Okay. Sue was saying I have to repeat what you say. Okay. Chef, 2007, 2008, you know, his love of the French cuisine has just grown and grown and grown. And actually, he uh, invited one of his friends. So we're very honored to have the vice president of the Master of French Chefs. Is that correct? Uh, Claude, thank you so much for joining us. This is such a great honor to have you here. Uh, so, what did you think about the um, the discussion? Did did we do uh, the French food and culture justice? Yeah, come here, Claude. Come sit with us here. I'll put my mask on. Things that I would uh, would like to share with you that it's not uh, France is not only uh, Brittany and Normandy. Yes. We have also uh, Burgundy. Yes. <laughs> that's where I'm coming from. That's okay. why I'm mentioning right. it. <laughs> See here, we're getting getting territorial now. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Paris, you, everything is more or less uh, between uh, two hours to six hours drive or train to. To go to the further part of uh, of France, and you can discover uh, a wonderful, wonderful land, wonderful, uh, beautiful villages and and town, diverse uh, vineyards, and uh, depends on what what you are looking for, actually. And since you are the vice president for the Master of Chefs, what's happening? Where are all our French restaurants? They all disappeared for a while. Are they coming back? They are suffering. That's know, true, so actually. Sad. Yes, but. Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, when you are a chef, you have to fight for your business. Um, yeah. Chefs are showing that uh, they are a fighter, and um, 
and in France and in New York and all over the, the world, actually, all the chefs are fighting to keep their business open. It's not very easy, but uh, I think when you when you love what you want to do, when you are making on a daily basis, you you are fighting and you will survive. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Do you find country French is becoming more popular than um, than the more formal uh, French cuisine? Has there been like a change? Yeah, the, especially here in the states. Yeah, but you you see changes in uh, all kind of cuisine. Actually, you mm -hmm. all the cuisine all around the world are are changing, moving, getting some fusion, getting some uh, uh, more traditional. Uh, we see some changes, but you know, uh, sometimes we are seeing French cuisine as uh, as uh, heavy because we are using a lot of butter, a lot of cream, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It's it's it becomes more and more a cliche actually. What is a Saint John student experience in France? Well, I mean, the Saint John students have actually a lot of opportunities and study abroad. Uh, Saint John's is really ahead of the game um, for the type of programming that we do. Uh, so right from day one, uh, students have the opportunity to participate in the Global Passport program. Uh, this is a great program for first year students. It's designed just for them. And that's pretty unique because most universities do not allow their first year students to study abroad. Uh, so we've designed a program specifically to them, for them to take them to Rome or Paris in their first year for one week uh, as part of their core program. Uh, we also have a campus in Paris uh, located in the sixth arrondissement. Um, and there we run a semester program every fall and as summer programs and um, uh, summer session one and two. Uh, and so not only do we have a classic French program, which students can take art, literature, uh, philosophy, and theology courses, uh, but we have a special uh, biology and chemistry program in the fall to help STEM students get abroad. Thanks, Greg. I hear the Paris campus is absolutely beautiful, and I have not been, so we'll see next October. My fingers crossed. Um, the next question, I think, for all of you, but particularly for Vincent and Claude, uh, and I'll have Vincent speak, and then you can answer, Claude. Um, if you only had one place to visit in France, what would it be? We already know your place. We already know what it is. No, no, the, no. Okay. <laughs> like, like, I, I you think I, say I, it. I, I. No, yeah. I mean, Brittany, you know, no. But <laughs> I, I think it. I think it depends. It depends what you are looking for. Like, if you want to be like on the water, right. if you're gonna, if you want to be in, uh, in, in near the mount, if you're gonna go to the mountain, to the mountains. Uh, I mean, there's so much diversity in France. Like Claude said, it's. Uh, it, you need you need to 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 pick what 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 you want to see, and then you can. But there are so many places, like you, you, like in Brittany, you, you go to Saint Malo, you go to Carnac in the south, where you have the Stone Age alignment. Uh, like you go in the south, you have the, Car the all the uh, medieval car uh, um, castles in Car like Carcassonne. You go to like I mean, there's so many, so many. It depends what 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 interest you have in in the visit. But, it's like going to the beach. It's, yeah. it's like taking a vacation, going, oh, I'm going yeah, to the beach, right? or I'm yeah. going to the mount to, to, yeah, to ski. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. like, yeah. it's, you, you have, the, you have yeah, a, right. a lot of vineyards in France. Mm -hmm. You have, yeah, there's so many. You can go to Champagne, like visit the, 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 the Champagne yeah. uh, castles. Yeah. It's, uh, there's so, so much, so no, much Vin culture. Vincent's correct. I guess that to the person who asked the question, it's really, what is it that you enjoy? Is it the wine country or like he said, you know, the water um, or you like the city or the museums and so forth? So, yeah, that that's a hard uh, question to answer, but I'm going to turn it over to Claude. Claude, do you want to answer that question? <laughs> no, I agree with Vincent. It's, it's difficult to answer that. I mean, uh, if you have, again, if you have uh, only two days or you land to Paris and you will see you will see a beautiful face of of, of France. Uh, if you have more time, then you can uh, you can cruise all, all, all around the, the, the country. Um, like I said, I'm from Burgundy, but I love the Mont Saint Michel, for example. This is a it's it's a, 
outstanding place. Um, and if I want to go for for one trip, then I would go to Bonn. Bonn, it's, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. s small city. It's the how do you spell that word? B E A U N E, and it's a it's a city where um, it's a small city in the middle of the vineyard, and um, I think that's where they are doing one of the most beautiful wine in the world. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, yeah. It's it's fantastic. It sounds beautiful. Okay, we're going to go to the next question. It says, "Where in New York City can we experience French culture?" Well, first, Bistro Eloise. Uh -huh. Anyone want to answer that? Yeah, it's also okay. yeah, there's a lot to do even this weekend uh, through the French Institute Alliance Francaise. There's, that often brings the uh, ballet, the Paris Opera Ballet Company. Uh, and some of the main uh, theater companies out of Paris, like the Théâtre de, uh, des Bouffes du Nord, uh, or uh, keep an eye on BAM, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, uh, which also brings in different French companies. Uh, I live in Brooklyn as well, uh, so if you happen to be on Smith Street around July 14th, they do a great Bastille Day party, uh, and you can also, they close off the street and you can play pétanque. <laughs> Uh, it's quite fun and uh, quite festive, uh, and so those are just a, a few of the ways that you can participate in French culture in the city. Um, this uh, reminds me of a conversation the three of us were having. Uh, Vincent, you mentioned, you know, there are certain festivals, but there was one festival you were talking about yesterday that sounded a lot of fun in um, in Vincent's hometown. Right? It was a hometown. Uh, near my hometown, it, uh, yes, there is. Uh, there, there, there are quite a few. Uh, I mean, there's a uh, there's a big uh, like Celtic festival in uh, Lorient called Festival Inter Celtic, and uh, it, it's even broadcasted in uh, on the on the French uh, national TV. Um, it's like it lasts like ten days uh, in uh, August. Uh, there's also like. There's a lot of like festivals over there. In Quimper, there's a, a f festival of the, like uh, Cornouaille. It's uh, like like the the they wear the participants they they wear like traditional uh, Breton costumes, which is um, which is uh, pretty interesting to 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 see. And uh, we have also like, uh, like the biggest music uh, music festival. Uh, in Europe, which is uh, called Les Vieilles Charrues, like uh, like the big what big stuff. Uh, it's uh, like around it's it's the weekend after the uh, Bastille Day, so but like Bruce Springsteen went there. Like this year, they cancelled it, but uh, Celine Dion was supposed to be there. There's a lot of like uh, big artists, um, and um, I grew up going there. <laughs> You're a music man. Um, okay, outside of food, what is your favorite French like cultural activity to do? Well, Claude, Claude came in on a what is that a scooter that you yes. came in on? Claude came in on a scooter from Car Hills. God bless you. Is that <laughs> one of your favorite cultural things? <laughs> Um, do you yeah. get that? That's kind of European in a way, right? Yes, I mean, yeah. you, you know, spending spending most of my time in the in the kitchen. I like to uh, enjoy uh, outside uh, free time. Go to for a walk with my family and uh, mm -hmm. and and spend some time on the outdoor walking. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's what I'm doing most besides cooking, eating, and drinking. Okay. Yeah, that I have to ask you when we're talking about culture and activity. So, with all the butter, the cream, the wonderful desserts, the wine, how does the French stay so skinny? Does anyone well, can tell me yeah, that? Yeah, because you, I've you I've walk a, a lot. I've a got a very uh, just tell us easy and this way we can eat all that good food. And then when when people ask time. me for that, that question, you said I answer that uh, the best way to stay healthy and skinny not obviously skinny but healthy it's to eat well that's uh -huh. very important to eat well to balance your to balance your meal and yes. not to not snack in between your meal and, and then you're gonna stay healthy well, and that's most the of butter and all of that of course i do eat beautiful. butter i need some you heard cream it here you know? everybody we can eat all the good stuff I thought that we still can maintain our weight yes that's but again, wonderful. again don't that. don't abuse it 
Yes, of course. No, that's not good. That's not good. All right, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rile up the the discussion a little bit because uh, I've been watching Emily and Perry, and uh, they bring up a little bit of, um, you know, uh, I think a little negativity about the Parisians versus the, the Southern French. Extremely cosmopolitan, uh, extremely fast paced, sophisticated. extremely yeah. sophisticated, mm -hmm. and life is a little slower, of course, yeah. uh, in the provinces. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, oftentimes, I think the Parisians get a bad rap for being rude, uh, but that's exactly what people say about New Yorkers as well. They, they think yeah. we're fast paced. Yeah. And in fact, we're not. We're actually mm -hmm. quite friendly. We're welcoming. Yes. Uh, and so uh, I think even if you make the um, slightest effort to speak some French and to say bonjour and to ask for help and to ask for directions, uh, you'll find great people in either Paris or, or the the provinces. I mean, pa Parisians are very proud of the of the of uh, being Parisians, mm -hmm. and uh, the people like from like like me, like being from Brittany. I'm very proud of being from Brittany too, but we are. I think we are more open-minded being in the uh, like the um, countryside than uh, than the, than, the, than the Parisians because mm -hmm. they. I'm not gonna make Parisians friends today. <laughs> Uh, but no, they they they, they think no. A lot of a, a, a lot of not all of them, of course. But like um, the, some some Parisians think that they are the same. Like yeah, that yeah. France is only Paris. Not right. but like, all the all the culture in France is in Paris. Like culinary, um, the whole thing. Like the wine is is outside, and the cheeses. Except uh, they have the breed, the breed more but outside of Paris, but. Uh, they, I don't know, but I think they treat more, they treat better the Americans than uh, yeah. than the than the no than the, the than the French that comes from other uh, oh, really? states. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Because they think they are here and we are here. Oh, very interesting. So they are like shishi, yeah. like we say shishi poo poo. And Fabiano, are you from Paris? I live in Paris. I love that. <laughs> I love it. But he's agreeing. Uh, Claude, we're going to get you in trouble too. Do you want to answer that question? <laughs> I, I think the the problem is coming mainly from the language barrier, and uh, you know when people cannot uh, understand each other, it causes some uh, some problems between people. But now I think French are getting better and better in uh, in uh, English uh, speaking. Then they can they can break that barrier and it's getting better. Uh, between between the Parisian, the southern people, or uh, I think it's becoming from the more from the cultural uh, point of view. We have uh, uh, the people from Marseille have a, uh, an accent that the, the Parisian find mm -hmm. find funny um, and mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. and, this is the the way of people living every day on the on the metro in the and the, the people from Marseille are living outside by the sea. It's maybe more pleasant, you know. I'm sure it does have an, an influence on your uh, your character, your way to live, and that's mm -hmm. with the diversity. Very nice. I know when I was there, um, the the French, especially the Parisians, uh, they love when you speak French or you make the attempt, even if it's not the best pronunciation, but I think they, they appreciate it if you, you try to speak in their language. Um, I don't know how we're doing on time. Just about. Okay. We have, what are we, a couple more minutes? Okay. We have five more minutes. Um, let's, oh, we have a question in the audience. Yes, Dr. Gunnis. <laughs> I have a few restaurateurs in my family too, and um, I remember my gr my grandfather when I was uh, like thirteen. He's like for, uh, fourteen. He told me like, "Oh, I will uh, I will build because there was like a, um, a bâtisse like uh, behind uh, his uh, like next to his house, and he was like." When you when you will be old enough, I will build you a restaurant. Aww. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. That's cute. I love it. Well, we have a couple more minutes. Can we squeeze in a little bit of um, French wine? 
what would you say is, uh, you know, if I'm going to buy some French wine, what's the best region to buy uh, French wine? Don't, don't ask you, Vincent. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's about the, it's, it's about the same as uh, like where to go if, uh, mm -hmm. if you want one place to revisit because the like there's d different wines like Bordeaux is more, like on more like on the heavy side, um, Burgundy is like um, on the on the lighter on the lighter notes, mm -hmm. um, like the southwest of France it's uh, like a lot of terroir also. It's it all depends on, like the the taste like. I think it's diff it's it's difficult to to, yeah, to pick so one. Right. So you what, just what you just need to pick. So what is, is the champagne? Is what the champagne is, is the most you know famous? What makes you feel like, you know? Well, I would say Burgundy. I mean, I love I lo my yeah. fav my my favorite is uh, is Burgundy wines, Burgundy, yeah. but mm -hmm. I can I can drink some Bordeaux. I can drink mm -hmm. uh, some wine from the Loire Valley. It's like Sometimes it, de it depends on the like the the moment, the right. the weather, the the food, the yeah the the occasion. So yeah, yeah. it really depends. Right. Thank you. Well, I think we're we're out of time, um, but I want to thank everybody who has signed on virtually. I hope you really felt uh, the French. Uh, we, we really we, we got immersed in, in all of uh, the French uh, culture here today. Um, today, I feel like I'm Emily, not in Paris, but Emily in uh, Jackson Heights, New York. <laughs> right? Um, I love just to hear, you know, the way, even the way you speak the English language. It's so beautiful. I mean, the French language is, is exquisite. And uh, we hope, you know, with the pandemic, as uh, Claude and, and Vincent have shared with us, it's really been a challenge for restaurant owners. And you can see Vincent, what he says about the love and all of that. Certainly when you come to Bistro Louise, it's the hospi hospitality is just wonderful. And that's why I always like to come here. Obviously the food and the wine is good, but it's it's really um, the people and the relationship that that you build. And um, it's really, it's it's a nice experience when I come here and dine, you know, with my family. So I can't thank you enough. I mean, he's supposed to be opening up in like two minutes and we've taken over his entire restaurant and it's been so nice. And Claude, he comes from a scooter all the way from Forest Hills <laughs> to be with us today. Claude, that was so sweet of you. Thank you so much. And Greg, all the time that you put into your presentation, you can see St. John's is very lucky to have him as a teacher. And um, we St. John's really has an excellent international education program. So I hope you uh, learned a little bit about that today. So um, how do we end this in the French way? What should we say? Besides merci beaucoup. Bonne journée. Bonne journée. And bon appétit. I can't wait to eat the food. <laughs> Sorry you're not here with us. <laughs> bye bye. Au revoir. <laughs>